Hey you, Meowcats are coming at you today with the food and stamina guide. Now, I know you're there, but I'm gonna really need you to hit that subscribe button. If you don't, every time you go search for food, it's just not gonna be there. You're gonna be at hospital, it's gonna be empty, there's gonna be no bandages, there's gonna be no band-aids, there's gonna be no, there's not even gonna be antiseptic. You're gonna get nothing. So please hit that subscribe button, it helps me out a lot. So do likes and comments, do that, that's something you want to do. I stream over at twitch.tv forward slash meowkaiser. You can catch me there every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8 p.m. EST. Also, I have a Discord for my live stream and for Black Survival. You can check those out in the description below. Now, let's address a couple new player uh, misunderstandings about food. The biggest thing that I get a lot is a lot of people ask me, what food should I be making? Are there good food? Are there bad food? Uh, the answer is quite simple. There's only good food. The reality about this game is that, sure, big heals help out a lot in the final area, but in general, if you're not able to get those big heals, it's a lot better to have a bunch of small heals anyway. They, they help out, even scrambled eggs. In general, you should be picking up food when you see them, as long as you have empty inventory space. And if you have too much, you can just go and fight and try to get rid of the excess food you have that way. It's the reason why players like me pull ahead. On the topic of deciding how to make food, uh, the answer isn't so much that I am going out of my way to make food. This game is all about efficiency, right? Whenever I pick an area to go to, I am trying to make multiple things in that area. There are multiple items that I need. So for example, let's talk about well, for instance. So there's mudfish here, there's iron ball, there's a knuckle, for example, there's ice, there's water. There's leather and there's turtle shell, right? So let's say I need food, but like I'm also doing a steel set. So I can pick up the turtle and, and shell and leather. Here I can make a leather shield, which is eventually used for a steel shield with steel later, assuming that I already have steel. If I'm on hand, I can pick up like a knuckle or a claw just to get that started. I can grab the iron ball and then later path for Heelys. And I can grab the mudfish. I can either make mudfish soup, which takes a cooking pot, or I can make baked mudfish, which takes the heated whetstone. And even like extra turtle shells, I can make into turtle soup, I can make into herb medicine, I can make into a mithril shield. Like this is just the top of what we can do. And naturally I have to react to what I see and decide what items to make and when to leave well when some other location happens to be more efficient for me. And I've totally forgot to mention bike helmet, you know, I can make this into hero helmet. You know, lots of different options that you have just from one area. So if you heard, watch my video about lighters, you know that you should be picking up lighters whenever you see them, as long as you have inventory space. These stack up to six. So when you see a lighter, there's uh, three of them. So generally want to pick as many as you can. They are used for stamina. They're used for food. They're used for so many different things. And another question that I get is, you know, should I pre-make heated whetstones or should I pre-make boiling water or should I pre-make, you know, heated oil, right? And the answer is if I see oil, right? I'll just hold the oil in my inventory and lighter in my inventory. If I don't need the oil, I can always just get rid of it. If I happen to get something that I can cook with using the heated oil, then, you know, I can just qu quickly craft that. And then if I don't have enough inventory space, I can drop the extra heated oil. So, you know, stuff like that. Generally speaking, you should just be holding components until you need them. So in general, like, let's say that we find ourselves with the heated whetstone, right? So the Areas that we want to be looking out for are places like Cemetery. There's two potatoes here. Uh, one thing that is commonly overlooked about Cemetery, despite, you know, there only being two potatoes here, is there's actually a lot more food here than you might think. There's bamboo and there's piano wire here. And those two can be used to make wizard's fishing pole. And with that, you can go into a water area to try to catch a fish, which, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes you get a can, but, you know, that's life. But this is another food source that a lot of new players overlook. You should really be thinking about this item. Other places that you can go using your whetstone are docks. There are tuna here that can be made into a grilled tuna. Pond, there's baked carps here. Well, there's baked mudfish here. And beach. And there's four asaris here. I totally forgot, but uh, if you have whetstones, there's also sweet potatoes here. Sweet potatoes are always good. This is generally just overlaps with pickaxe and gemstone but there's not that much food here but it's something to keep in mind typically speaking you go to tunnel you know looking to pick up uh components for your armor so like the gemstones you might be looking for tights you might be looking for the iron balls those are all really good for different armor you can craft right and you know there's also wires here this is one of the two wire locations so sometimes you just come across the sweet potatoes and you're just like sweet extra food another thing that you should be doing 
is, let's say that we're here. Now, obviously, pick up every ramen you see. Ramen is so good. You can use this with boiling water for hot ramen. You get four of them. Uh, Stir-fried ramen is also really good. Just need a frying pan. And spicy noodle you can use with soy sauce. There's normally better things that you can use soy sauce on, but like sometimes, you know, just for the sake of making good use of your inventory space, spicy noodle is fine. But in general, when you're here, you want to be picking up frying pans if you see them. Scrambled egg is really good, just in general. It's not uncommon for me to make 16 of these. And, you know, picking up whatever cooking pots you see, right? You can pick up cooking pots here, you can pick them up over at Alley, you can pick them up over at a hotel, you can pick them up over at Uptown, right? And the thing about these cooking pots is that... So typically, most people try to use them for turtle soup, right? But the reality is that you can use it for fish stew, which uses carp. You can make mudfish soup, which uses mudfish. So the thing to keep in mind is that if you ever find yourself with an inventory of like five, six cooking pots, the areas you want to be going to are ponds, because not only are there extra turtle shells here, there's five here, which is more than any other area, but there's also carps here, which, you know, if you have extra cooking pots, you can use it on the fish stew. As well as you can go to well, which has three mudfish, which can be use the cooking pot, and three turtle shells. So those have the most items there that use up your cooking pots. And as well as you can make stamina while you're here. You know, you got the ice water. It's always good. And you can also make stamina over at Ponds, which has the 1.5 liter water bottle. Do not forget about stamina. Forgetting about stamina is how you end up resting all the time. And resting all the time is how you fall behind other players. You just won't be spending as much time searching as other players will, and your build will fall behind. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that another strategy that a lot of people do is... So, here's the thing about Forest and Trail, right? So, Oriental Grass is really good. There's 10 of them at Trail, and there's 7 of them at Forest. And another thing about Forest is that there's 2 flowers here. So, you can find the flowers and you can, you, know, you can make herbs. And then, to make healing potions, all you have to do is go over to Tunnel. There's 5 glass bottles here. And then, you can turn your herbs into healing potions, which heal for a lot. So, Tunnel ends up being more food in that situation. Typically, making... Herbs is really good if your build path crosses by tunnel at some point. Also, just in general, just carrying these is really nice. I don't actually remember how much this stacks up to, but like it's not uncommon for me to be holding like six, seven, or nine of them, and then just later getting six the boiling water I need in order to craft them into a bunch of oriental concoctions. It's just so much food. And let's talk about the easy food. So there's hospital, which has, you know, pills. It has bandages, it has band-aids. Uh, do use these if you have empty health. As I said, food is food. If you pick it up and you can just eat them, great. And there's Scroll of Dongyi, which can be used for herb medicine. It can be used for acupuncture, which takes a needle, and which can also be used on ten ton uh, turtle soup to make ten tonic soup. These are just generally good healing. Scroll of Dongyi also has uh, synergy with drop near. So for those of you who don't know, I'm just gonna pull it up this way. Drop near has a passive where every fifth time you craft a food or stamina item, you will get plus one of that fifth food. So if you use it to craft a herb medicine, you will actually get 260 worth of healing rather than just one. And you can also use it over on Tuna, which will get you 300 healing instead of 150. And of course, you can't forget, if you happen to get lucky and you get a, a uh, Tree of Life, you can use it towards Crimson Flower. And, you know, you would get 440 worth of healing. Generally speaking, unless Tree of Life offers you a very quick armor piece, you should almost always be crafting it into Crimson Flower. It's just that good. So, Hospital is typically emergency food. So, like, for example, like, let's say we wanted to start here and, you know, there's a bunch of armor pieces we wanted. That's great. So, we will be picking up the pills and the bandages if we see them. We'll be picking up the Scroll of Dongyi if we see them. Uh, let's say you're getting ping-ponged and you're low on HP. You know, you got a little bit unlucky. That happens. Hospital is an okay place to go to if you have no lighters, if you have nothing in your inventory that can immediately be crafted into food. This is where the pills might save you, the bandages might save you. There's also other areas you can go in emergency. You can go to fire station, for example. You can get, you know, bandages and pills here. And you can also go chapel, where you can... There's also three holy water, and there's also a holy grail here, which can be crafted into holy water. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So let's talk about soy sauce. Soy sauce is super important. So Uptown has three soy sauces. And Factory has two soy sauces. Soy sauces can be crapped into spicy noodles we talked about before. Uh, there's also pickled garlic, which is a, what, like 280-something heal? This is one of the best uses of soy sauce. Garlic is dropped off of bears. There's also two garlics over at uh, Hotel. If you're starting at Hotel, typically you end up going to Uptown right after. 
don't use your garlics on garlic bread in that situation. Try to see if you can get away with using your garlics for pickled garlic. If you can't, you know, you can always just make garlic bread. But, you know, it's something to keep in mind. Soy sauce is also used on potatoes to make braised potatoes. Generally speaking, you want to be using it on pickled garlic. But, you know, you can always hold the soy sauce and the potato in your inventory. And if you happen to get the garlic later, then great. If not, you can make it. You can make up some free inventory space by just making braised potatoes. It's just good healing. And, of course, has synergy with drop near. And, of course, there's braised burdock, which burdock is bit dropped off of gorilla. And there's burdock over at hotel. So, another thing to keep in mind is that if you're not able to control bear grill, you can always just hop into a hotel. There are one, two, four different items here that you can use to make use of your soy sauces. As well as two over at Lighthouse. If you're really desperate, you can go here. Typically, these burdocks get used on burdock tea. But you never know. They might be there. Why not check? Uptown is also just really good food in general, especially in the early game. Uh, you can pick up the, like, the extra curry powders here, which can be crafted into curry using boiling water. You can pick up chocolates here, which can be made into ch chocolate pies, which just needs bread and chocolate, which you get at the start of the game. And later, if you're really lucky, you can uh, combine them with boxes to make chocolate pie boxes. Boxes are found over at Pond, School, and Tunnel. So always think about how you can like make extra food while making armor. These are areas where you can actually make armor. So for example, we have you know Windbreaker and Arm Warmers. Always be thinking about how you can overlap your food, with your armor, with your stamina. There's even alcohol over here and lighters. So, you know, you can just grab the alcohol and make sorghum wine into a cowling with liquor. It's just, it's good stuff. There's also coffees here. Uh, you Normally you make Americano, but in pinch you can make iced coffee. There's also coffee liquor, which can be really good with uh, if you get a bat or if you're just holding the bread from the start of the game. This is so much healing in the early game. It can really help you pull ahead. And don't forget about oranges. They can be used to make orange aid. Carbonated water is over at Well. So typically, like a lot of like hotel to uptown or even uptown starts stop at Well as their next location. And there's your carbonated water. It's all right there. You know, you picked up the windbreaker and the steel chain. And then you use that windbreaker with the leather here, which makes a leather jacket. And then with the steel chain, you were holding your inventory. You got the rider's jacket. And then you get the carbonated water. This is something that you should be thinking of all the time when you're making food. I could probably cover everything. Actually, let me cover one last thing before I let you guys go. So now we need to talk about heated oil. Heated oil is extremely valuable. And I know I said extremely valuable on pretty much all the food, but that's kind of the reality. All food is extremely valuable. So there's bird eggs that drop here, which you know you can use for fried eggs, which uses heated oil. You can make for scrambled eggs. Uh, there's also at Town Hall, there's two bird meats, which can be used to far fried chicken. You get uh, two times fried chicken for every one bird meat, whereas you only get one times uh, fried egg for every bird egg. Cemetery is another place to think of. There's bird eggs here too. Now, another thing to keep in mind when it comes to making food is animal control. Animal control is super important. You can check out the I card up above to see the full details of it, but we're going to kind of just like roughly cover it. So let's say you're holding oil, right? So crows drop bird meat guaranteed, right? So that's already 130 healing. But another thing about Crow is that they have an icebox supply drop. An icebox supply drop is an ingredient. So ingredients can include a lot of different things, include like wire, battery, but you know, it can also include, you know, extra bird meat. It can include grilled eel. Uh, this is where a lot of like the random food drops happen and is one of the best ways to pull ahead is by controlling these animals. If you have the timer on the Crow, and you're, you're hoarding a bunch of oil, you will always be able to use all that oil. This is something to keep in mind. Uh, another thing is, you know, ospreys, you know, they have bird eggs. Other people might be like, okay, so I should just never get bat, right? Because it only drops bread, and it's a type A supply, which is considered a weapon supply. Uh, here's the thing about the type A supply. Mudfish is a thrown weapon. This can be dropped by bat. There is a bunch of foods that uh, bats can drop, as well as other useful things, so don't rule that out. The only ones that don't really drop food consistently is Osprey and Bloodhound because they drop type uh, D supply. Well, Bloodhound also drops type A supply, so there's a little bit extra chance there. But type D supply specifically is an armor piece. But the thing about these two is that they already drop something that can be used towards food. So Ospreys give bird eggs and Bloodhounds give lighters. So they're just in general just good things to get anyway. Pretty much every single 
animal is good to get, so don't ever rule them out. And hunting dog is also one of those animals that everyone kind of contests for because it has an icebox supply as well as a type A supply. So keep these in mind. They're real, they're free mastery and they're potentially free food. Never rule them out. So you're actually going to have to go through this and make sure you learn every single food crafting recipe and you're going to have to make sure you remember where they drop at and where to find them. This, I mean, I could go on for like hours about this topic. <laughs> this video is already probably going to be really long, but you know, in between games, browse the index. It's right there. If you don't know where it is, it's right here. Just hit the index, hit area. You can see where everything is and make sure you know every single crafting recipe. I know it's difficult. It's something you're going to need to learn eventually. And one of the best ways to do it is every single game, try to craft something new, try to craft something you've never seen before. And like, let's say you pick up ramen, you're just like, okay, I have ramen. Click on it and click to see, you know, what can I craft with this? That's the fastest way to learn is just go into games, play the game and try to learn what new things you can craft. Uh, one last thing before I forget, there's also a very small, small chance that you might find yourself in a situation where you want to do this. Uh, sometimes you're at Uptown, you pick up the coffee, you have extra coffee lying around, and adrenaline drink is something that can be made with Bacchus. Bacchus is found over at Slums. This will replenish your stamina all the way back to full. It's like, I think like a two, three second channel when you try to use this. And then you get an awakening effect, which gives you plus 15 attack and plus 15 armor. It's just in all in all a good thing. If you get it, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. But it's something to keep in mind. So that concludes my food guide. I know we covered a lot. But if there's anything to take away is you should be trying to combine your food making with everything else you're doing. You should be combined with your weapon building. You should be combined with your armor building and your stamina. It's not just food. And I will see you guys in the next video.